Mutiny on the Bounty movie review. Um, so I should clarify which one I've seen. I, this is the 1935 version. Uh, this has been made into a movie many times over. Uh, I think there was a version in 1962 with Marlon Brando, and there was a version uh, in the 80s with uh, Mel Gibson or something. Um, but yeah, the, the version I saw was the original 1935 with, uh, what was the name? Uh, Clark Gable and I forget the name of the other guy. So yeah, yeah, this is one of those classic films that uh, I've just been meaning to watch forever. Uh, and then I saw it at my video store and I thought, okay, uh, time to check this one out. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I really had no idea what the story was behind this and it's a fascinating story. In fact, after watching this movie, I, you know, went down one of those Wikipedia wormholes where you're researching all this stuff about it. Uh, it's based on a real historical incident, although it's based on like a fictional, it's based on a historical novel about the real historical incident. So uh, Wikipedia kind of walks through all the liberties that the novel and the movie kind of took with the real history. Um, but yeah, this uh, in the 18th century, kind of in 17, when was it? 1787 or something like that. Yeah, 1787. So this uh, ship was going around and it landed in Tahiti, which is interesting because like, you know, you always figure Tahiti as like a, a gorgeous tourist de destination nowadays. Uh, I've never been. I mean, it probably costs a fortune to go to Tahiti these days, right? Uh, all the tourist attractions there or whatever. Uh, high-priced resorts. I don't know. Is Tahiti expensive? But like uh, I never really thought about like what Tahiti was like in the 18th century uh, But yeah, like uh, the, this uh, apparently what was regarded as a paradise even way back when in 1787 by the sailors who were stopping over it So it's, it's, it's an interesting little portrait of like what the sea lanes were like back in the 18th century British colonial whatever uh, yeah, and then the sailors mutiny and some of them go back to Tahiti. Um, and the story, some of them are brought back to England for trial, but some of them stay on this island of Tahiti. Uh, and then apparently if you research this on Wikipedia, the story does continue from there because then like they try to set up this community. Uh, I think this is what happens in some of the other novels. There was like a trilogy of novels. Um, the f Mutiny on the Bounty was only the first one, but there are two other historical novels in this trilogy, loosely based on real history uh, about the community they try and set up in Tahiti and then uh, apparently uh, degenerates into fighting or something like that. I haven't actually, I was really into researching this at one time, but it's all a little bit faded in the memory now. But there, there was some reason why this uh, community that they tried to set up on Tahiti went sour, and I think that's like the subject of the third novel. And I I've, uh, was thinking at the time, boy, I'd really like to track these novels down. I'm not sure if they're still in print. I'm, I'm, you can probably find them on Amazon. And I never got around to doing it. So anyways, fascinating story uh, behind the movie, kind of the, the history behind it. But uh, turning to the movie itself, so, again, this has been made into a movie multiple times, but I think the 1935 movie is largely regarded as the most famous. Um, it's, um, it's, it's a good movie. It's a classic movie. There is, the style is dated. Like, it's not how they make movies nowadays. It hits you over the head a little bit too much. Um, Right from the beginning, they, they have this opening crawl in the movie, like the opening words. In December 1787, HMS Bounty lay in Portsmouth Harbor on the eve of departure for Tahiti in the uncharted waters of the Great South Sea. The Bounty's mission was to procure breadfruit trees for transplanting to the West Indies as cheap food for slaves. Neither ship nor breadfruit reached the West Indies. Mutiny 
prevented it. Mutiny against the harsh 18th century sea law. But this mutiny, famous in history and legend, helped bring about a new discipline based upon mutual respect between officers and men, by which Britain's sea power is maintained as security for all who pass upon the seas. So they don't actually read that out in dramatic voice in the movie. They, these are just the words that appear on the screen. Um, but yeah, you get a sense right from there uh, that this movie is not going to be subtle about its themes. Um, and they also spoil the fact that a mutiny is coming. Although I suppose you knew that already right from the title, right? Mutiny on the Bounty. I, uh, I actually saw the Simpsons parody of this movie before I saw the movie itself. I don't know if anyone else remembers the parody The Simpsons did of this years ago, uh, but Principal Seymour Skinner plays, you know, the captain of the bounty, and he's just like trying to provoke the men into mutiny. He's just like giving them terrible thing after terrible thing. He's like, well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna mutiny? Well, what if I do this to you? Then are you gonna mutiny? And he it just kind of, needlessly provoking them and taunting them with mutiny until they finally mutiny. Turns out if you watch the real movie, that's, that parody is actually not that far off about how the, the actual movie actually goes. I mean, the, the, the captain, as he's portrayed in this movie, is just needlessly antagonistic. They're just really setting him up as a bad guy, and he just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and by the time the crew actually mutiny, it's just like, no surprise. You're like, well, why didn't they mutiny an hour ago? Because, uh, <clears throat> they, yeah, they don't actually mutiny until about one hour, 20 minutes into the movie. Um, then, uh, that one hour, 20 minutes can be a little bit boring because you just know a mutiny is going to take place. Uh, so you're just kind of waiting for what what is going to happen that you already know is going to happen. <clears throat> However, after that, it gets interesting because the last 40 minutes of the film deal with the aftermath of the mutiny. And here, if you don't already know the history, and I didn't the first time I saw this, uh, you, don't, you really don't know what's coming. And, and this is quite interesting. Uh, in my opinion, the last 40 minutes of this movie are the most interesting part, uh, sort of like the 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 trial around some of the mutineers who were brought back to England. Uh, and uh, yeah, a good history lesson, especially to us Americans who are in ignorant of our British naval history. Although if you go to Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia points out all the inaccuracies in this movie where it differed from real history. But I think the bare bones of the story uh, at least have a historical basis. So, if you haven't seen this movie already, why not go see it? It's a classic, huh? You should see it.